This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time, but as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Welcome to Hammett Place, the Stanley Parable. That's my attempt at the Bane impersonation. Hello everyone and welcome. This is a story-driven Half-Life 2 mod. Where I can uh, follow the orders of the narrator, or I can. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself, and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. Well, I guess it would be pr pretty terrifying. Anybody here? No. Seems all like I'm alone. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Now, there's, this is where the multiple choice comes in. I can either follow the orders of the narrator, or go against him. So I'm gonna be an obedient- Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just gonna go here. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door, and walked back in the right direction. Okay, let's listen. No, let's just go. I'm gonna ignore the narrator. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Indeed. Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. Oh, that's and since he was walking into the middle of nowhere, and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley decided that he would punish himself. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. Can I leave? No. Let's push the button to go down then. Let's see here if we can do that. Oh, Stanley. <laughs> you know, you really aren't going anywhere, and I don't say that deceitfully. I truthfully mean that there isn't a story down here. The story was back up where I told you to go in the first place. Right now, you're just running around looking at empty halls. And frankly, that's perhaps even more infuriating for me. So why don't you throw me a bone, give me a chance, and just let me tell the story I want to tell, hmm? Well... Let's see. Should we listen to the narrator people? Or should we be a rebel? Like I was born to be. Hemoth doesn't follow instructions because he's a pig. Ah. Now listen carefully. This is important. Stanley walked through the red door. I see this red door. It looks so nice. Oh, but I prefer blue. I'd rather go. Aha. Uh -huh. Perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. What the hell do you want from me, man? Shit. Let's go through the blue door again. See what happens. Walking down a hallway. I still don't think we're communicating Damn it. properly. Stanley walked through the red door. Fine, God. Jesus. I guess I'll have to go through the red door then. Okay. And where do I go now? Good. Good. Now, if you don't mind, there's something I'd like to show you. But to do that, I think it would be best for us to start from the beginning. Are you kidding me? You're gonna send me back to the beginning? This is a very sad story, 
about the death of a man named Stanley. Aww. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Oh, thank His you. job pushing buttons demanded little of him, so there was not much of himself to give. And in this way, Stanley's job felt less and less like his every day. But if buttons need pushing one day, it means they'll need pushing the next and then the next. So without question or judgment, Stanley continued to do what Dooscreen told him. One keystroke flowed into another keystroke, flowed into his ride home, flowed into dinner, flowed into waking up, flowed into going to work, and here he was again. Stanley was typing out a complete sentence that said absolutely nothing at all. Yes. If in reality no one ever actually disappeared from the office, and Stanley never got the opportunity to make a decision, to choose which path he wanted to take, would his life still have any meaning? Perhaps when we long for something deeply enough, these hopes and fantasies become so strong in our minds that we truly believe that we're there, controlling that person and living that adventure. Tax returns. To manipulate your own thoughts and emotions might mean freedom from a self-imposed prison. But these delusions can be fatal to those who can't tell the difference. And so, Stanley asked, if that door never opened, if I'll never be able to walk away from those people and from these buttons, is this life still worth experiencing? Am I actually happy? Stanley answered this question by pushing a button. Then he pushed a button, and then he pushed a button. Then he pushed a button. Yes. Then he pushed a button. Brilliant. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Let's follow the orders this time. Let's we'll see what happens, man. Yay! Ooh, a box. This is sinister. Really empty hallways. Hello. Stanley entered the lounge. He was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. Popular scientist. What is he doing up here? Huh. Is that a rocket? What is that? Huh. Let's go see the boss, shall we? Mm, let's see what he has to say to Hammond. The obeying Coming guy. to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. What if I go downstairs? No, let's follow this door this time. Let's see what happens, actually. Um, hello, no one's here. Entering his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. It was at this point that he began to feel dizzy and a little sick, Whoa. and even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a <coughs> keypad next to the filing cabinet in the corner of his boss's <coughs> office. Can I take Stanley a had never seen this panel before and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. In fact, only Stanley's boss knew this since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret. Ooh. And so he had assigned the keypad a combination that only he could possibly know. The number of his freshman dorm number in college. One, nine, five, seven. One? But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly three, three, have this. Seven. Ah. What about one, two, three, four? Damn it! What the hell did he say? One, nine, five, so, two. Stanley okay. just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the keypad was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was one, nine, five, seven. Mm, I just can't put my finger on it. What's the combination? What's the combination? Uh, one, nine, five, seven. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. brew. Stanley ventured forth into the newly opened passageway. Great. Let's see. Oh, I thought some shadow was there. As he drew deeper into the bowels of the building, Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. And just as he began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find... 
to find rows and rows of monitors. Screens with a number above it. Stanley noticed, however, that these were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building, his co-workers. Even his own number, 427, had a place on the wall. But why a setup so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him, revealing Whoa. the ultimate truth of the situation. Dear God, Black Mesa. The An enormous control panel Stanley discovered, but not one that controlled simple machinery. Buttons were labeled with emotions. Happy, sad, levers and knobs controlled actions. <laughs> nope. Walking, eating, doing work, or watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. A human being, you say? And the reality began to sink in. Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor, had been under someone's control, always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something happened. Erection. A spark. Oh. <gasps> Stanley looked up and saw the generator overhead, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the ladder in the back of the room and began to climb towards the rafters. Yes, let's do that, shall we? Let's go and shut this place down. It's a social experiment. Damn it. I'm a guinea pig in a maze. On the ground. <laughs> I've worked here for many years. God damn it. The higher Stanley climbed, the closer he felt to freedom. The further from enslavement. Freedom is free. You gotta save Stanley from his fucking prison uh-oh green and red two butons engage generator disable generator yeah what do I should I shut this place down let's do that let's shut this son of a bitch down uh, let's squeeze it a bit there we go darkness Blackness, power gone, all alone, and then a light. <gasps> oh, freedom! As he stepped through the door into the fresh outside air, a feeling of liberation rushed through Stanley's body. He had seen power. He had seen enslavement and he had destroyed it. The underling was in control now. He had found his leading role. Stanley never discovered why everyone had gone missing, nor how and when he had come under the machine's control. But it didn't upset him terribly, because he knew that this was how things were meant to happen. All he felt was a delight unlike any he had ever known before. Never again would he follow someone else's orders without question. Never again would anyone tell Stanley where to go, what to do, or how to feel. I can fly! No more bosses. No more instructions on a screen. Stanley decides for himself now. And he stepped out into the world. And he felt the cool breeze upon his skin. And Stanley was happy. I am happy too. I'm so happy. Well, it was an interesting story, wasn't it? Just a short little thing. It's called the Stanley Parable. Narration by Kevin Brighting. Very good narration. Very good actor. Uh, remastered by Colin Eddings. Hmm. Remastered, eh? Additional optimization and modding Lyle Miller. 
Additional materials, S. Brown and Scrogging 04. Music, nothing. Oh. Dead already, any other name, six goes to I, my way. French translation, Pierre Trignan and Hugo. Turkish, uh, yeah, oh, this is translation, doesn't matter. Thank you for playing this video game. Oh, you're welcome. <gasps> you're so welcome.